from NASA. <laughs> we just arrived at um, Johnson Space Centre. Um, we've got tours in about 30 minutes time, um, so we're a little bit early. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. You can see I've got my little astronaut earrings on again. We're actually kicking ourselves. We didn't wear our NASA t-shirts that we bought at um, Kennedy Space Centre the other day. Anyway, super excited for today. We've got um, two VIP tours. Um, the first one this morning is mission control, and then this afternoon we've got astronaut training. So by the end of the day, me and Nat will be ready to fly to the moon. <laughs> sure, sure, Nat says. <laughs> All right, I'll take you along, show you as much as we can today. See ya. It was really hard to film while the tour guide was um, speaking, so you're just going to have to put up with listening to me. So this is the environment of control unit from the Apollo 13 shuttle. This is the real thing, not a replica, and its main job was to keep the engines running smoothly. Here we are holding an actual glove and boot from a spacesuit, or its more formal name is known as an extravehicular mobility unit or EMU. These items are both custom fitted to each astronaut and cost around $2 million. Also pictured is a diaper that astronauts wear when they're outside the shuttle, although this one is brand new and hasn't been up into space like the glove and the boot have.
inside this shuttle simulator, there is around 250 miles of wiring. That's enough to stretch from Houston to Dallas or from Houston up to the International Space Station. And all of these wires are in the real positioning of where they would be on the spacecraft. Every astronaut that's ever been to space has trained in this simulator. So we feel really lucky that we were able to sit in the seat that the likes of Alan Shepard and Neil Armstrong have. So this here is the mission control room from the Apollo 11 moon landing. So we're sitting upstairs in the viewing gallery. What you're about to hear over the next seven to eight minutes is a recording of the moon landing and the conversations between mission control and the astronauts on Apollo 11. And on the screens in front is the maps and coordinates followed by the live feed from the space shuttle when Neil Armstrong takes his first step onto the moon.
I do. You're looking good here. Okay, we're gonna be busy for a minute. Approximately six hours after Eagle landed safely on the moon, the flight controller is prepared to receive the first television transmission from Tranquility Base. Okay, got a good picture. Okay, we're uh, 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 contrast that, and uh, currently it's upside down on our monitor, but we can make out uh, a fair amount of detail. Network telecom jumped in first. Okay, we're just uh, uh, we're working on it. Can you confirm that your uh, reverse switch is in the proper position? Okay, we're going to put it right side down. Stand by, we're going to have it on the camera. We are in reverse. Yeah, All right, thank you. The oxygen temperatures are coming down. Look good. Roger. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. <laughs> You can take a 10-second look. You just stepped on the little pad. Okay. <laughs> okay, I just checked uh, getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's, uh, that hasn't collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy. Pretty good total jump. Roger, Neil. Okay, we're going to have to go back up. Okay, we're going to have to go back up. historic telephone call ever made from the White House. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you have done. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world, I am sure that they too join with Americans in recognizing what an immense feat this is. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. And as you talk to us from the Sea of Tranquility, it inspires us to redouble our efforts to bring peace and tranquility to Earth. For one priceless moment in the whole history of man, all the people on this Earth are truly one. One in their pride in what you have done. And one in our prayers that you will return safely to Earth. After listening to the simulation, we were allowed downstairs into the mission control room. 
obviously this room is no longer used and all the monitors are lit up just for the purposes of this tour but just to be able to go into this room which holds so much history was just amazing. on the tour is the current day mission control so again we were taken upstairs to the viewing gallery which is behind glass and from here we got to see live feeds from the International Space Station up on the large monitors. On the screen in the centre with the map it shows the current location of the International Space Station it's just left of the centre inside the white circle and in a 24-hour period the space station makes approximately 16 orbits of the Earth so that means it travels through 16 sunrises and sunsets and each orbit takes around 90 to 93 minutes. If you look at the monitor second from the left, this is the feed outside of the International Space Station and we could see it move from land to sea. And then moving over to the far right screen, this is a feed from inside the space station. The tour guide gave us a detailed description of what each flight controller is responsible for. If you have a close look, you can see their titles such as Flight Director, Capcom, Ethos and Ops Planning. Don't remember what all of the roles do, however I do remember that they give the Ops Planners the nickname of Mum or Dad, so depending if it's a male or a female on shift, as that person is responsible for planning out the astronauts day down to five minute increments and they will take care of any immediate changes um, to their day during real time ops. So there's about 20 flight controllers in the mission control room, um, as well as more staff in the back rooms located around the perimeter of the room. see some really great footage from both inside and outside of the International Space Station while we were here and I think this is an experience that um, we'll both never forget. It was certainly worth every dollar that we paid for this tour and I've now decided that I want a career change and I would like to go and work in mission control at NASA. done our first tour here at NASA, um, Mission Control. What did you think, Nat? Yeah, it was pretty good. Pretty good? Yes. thought it was amazing. So we, um, we got to hold space gloves and um, space boots that have um, actually been into space. And a space nap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that one hasn't been into space. <laughs> that was unused, that one. Um, we also... What else did we do? We went into like the simulators, so we got to sit in the actual flight simulator um, where pretty much every astronaut um, who's been to space has trained in, um, so that was really awesome. And then we went into um, mission control for um, Apollo, um, so where they did the moon landing, 
um, so we got to record actual footage of um, mission control that was pretty awesome and then we went into current mission control so um, we got to see them working um, could see the uh, all the live feed through to the International Space Station we saw some astronauts flying around in that um, we saw some videos of the earth from the space station so it was it was really awesome um, so we've just had lunch and we are waiting for our second tour now, which is astronaut training. So we're sending that to space. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, yeah, looking forward to this one too. But yeah, it's definitely well worth the money we spent on these tours. So they were 200 American each. That ended up 300 Australian for us. But um, for me, worth every penny. Yeah. All right, we'll take you along and show you what we can. Our afternoon tour, astronaut training, um, started at the Sunny Carter training facility in the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory or NBL. This training facility was built in the mid 1990s and it accommodates a full size mock up of the International Space Station modules and payloads. So the pool is 202 feet or 60 meters long. Uh, 102 feet or 31 meters wide. It's got a depth of 40 feet or 12 meters and it holds 6.2 million US gallons or 23.5 million liters of water. Um, so the astronauts perform simulated EVA tasks in preparation for their upcoming missions. Uh, they wear their full spacesuits in the pool um, and it's designed to provide neutral buoyancy to simulate the microgravity that they will experience during their space flights. Um, so you'll see that they have divers in the pool that are ready to assist the astronauts should the need arise. So while the astronauts are training underwater, they are fitted with comms to talk to mission control. And sometimes uh, they'll also have mission controllers who are doing their own training. Uh, the facility also has a hyperbaric chamber um, that they use for treating any dive-related emergencies, as well as an altitude chamber, uh, which simulates the psychological effects of flying. And when this facility is not being used for astronaut training, um, the pool is used by the DOD for training and also for scoop dive training. Next on the tour, we head into the Jake Garner Mission Simulator and Training Facility. You'll see on the walls in the hallways, photos of each shuttle and the astronauts who flew on that mission. This facility contains more flight simulators such as the Boeing Starliner and it houses a functional space station simulator which familiarizes the astronauts with the in-orbit laboratory systems of the International Space Station. It also houses a T-38 Talon jet trainer which let me tell you was not easy to climb into during this photo. The Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility consists of components that prepare astronauts for station operations. There's a full-scale replica of the International Space Station and it provides as much realism as possible to match conditions that will be experienced on the space station. 
So in almost 50 years, the Johnson Space Center has trained more than 300 US astronauts and 50 astronauts from other countries. They all start with two years of basic training in the classroom where the astronaut candidates learn about vehicles and space station systems, uh, earth science, meteorology, space science and engineering. Outside of the classroom, they must complete military, water and land survival training, become scuba qualified and pass a swimming test in their first month. They need to swim three lengths of a 25 metre or 82 foot pool without stopping, then swim three lengths of the pool in a flight suit with tennis shoes and no time limit. Once the basic training period is complete, the candidates may be selected to become astronauts and in second phase of their training, they'll be grouped with experienced astronauts who will serve as their mentors to share knowledge. And then finally, astronauts receive their mission and crew assignments and they enter into advanced training phase. In the final 10 month training period, they focus on activities, exercises and experiments that are specific to their mission. The tour finishes at the Rocket Park, where we got to see up close and personal the Saturn V rocket, which is the tallest, heaviest and most powerful rocket ever flown. Um, it stands 363 feet tall, and when it's fueled and ready for launch, the rocket can weigh up to 6.2 million pounds or 2.8 million kilograms. Uh, this rocket was primarily used during the Apollo program to send Americans to the moon. It was flown from 1967 to 1973 and it launched 26 astronauts into space with six successful missions landing men on the moon. The Saturn V rocket at NASA's Johnson Space Center is the only one comprised of all flight certified hardware. So in other words, this one's the real deal, it's not a mock-up. Okay, Rachel's about to go on the qualified astronauts. <laughs> I've just been and landed on the moon and then took a little trip to Mars. It was all on a VR simulator but it was still pretty cool. And I watched. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so we've just wrapped up our um, second tour here at NASA. Um, so we did astronaut training. Um, it, was, it was a great tour um, but I think I definitely enjoyed mission control this morning better than the afternoon tour um, but it was still amazing to see like their um like the, the massive swimming pool that they they do their training in they've got a mock-up of the international space station in the training pool and it's like 40 feet deep and what did we work out 24 million 24 and a half million yeah. liters of water in the pool um yeah like yeah I don't think we even got a proper idea of how deep it really was. Like we were standing upstairs um, in a viewing corridor and um, yeah, they, they were doing training in the pool at the time. It was, it was incredible. And then we went into another facility um, into an F-38 um, flight simulator. <laughs> Just trying to get into oh that was um, a challenge in itself. Um, I don't have any footage of that, but I do have um, a photo you've probably seen. 
um, but that was that was a real um, simulator used by pretty much all the astronauts so just to even be able to sit in that yeah, it, yeah it's cool. pretty cool um, yeah it was um, and then the, the last part of the tour um, was basically a huge big building which had all the modules from the um, the space station in it um, and we learned about how you know they send up um, basically all the groceries and clothing and everything for astronauts before their launches um, and then I think they bring them back down they bring back down every two weeks or so like dirty laundry and food waste and human waste and everything and then they send up um, yeah new supplies of food and clothing and whatnot every couple of weeks so it was it was really interesting um, and obviously it was a live training facility so um, it was pretty cool to see all that anyway we've just spent another small fortune in the gift shop um, I didn't plan on spending too much but um, <laughs> there's a dinosaur walking in here oh there is too I've got that there, if you can see over there, mm -hmm. the dinosaur making its way in here. So that's a bit random for today. Anyway, we're just sitting for five minutes and um, then we've got a dinner reservation. So um, we'll make a move shortly. Um, but yeah, I think we're both pretty tired. It's been um, a pretty big full on day, um, but an awesome day. Loved every minute of it. So, We'll take you along to dinner and then that'll probably be it for today's vlog. See you all. So for dinner we've ordered, um, what were they, lemon pepper barbecue pork ribs. So, what's the verdict? Pretty good. Yeah, fall off the bone, yeah. like really, really tasty ribs. And the mac as well, like, oh, the mac's delicious. yeah, it's divine. And then they bring a little bucket to the table with steaming hot cloth. To, um, to wash our hands. So, very impressed with this. Um, thanks, Danny, for the recommendation. Um, we really like this place. <laughs>